About three weeks ago in Moscow, there was a really dramatic press conference, which I have to warn you includes the display of some graphic images. Uh, the press conference was called by the family of Ibrahim Todashev, who was shot and killed by FBI agents in Orlando last month. Mr. Todashev was 27 years old. He's originally from Chechnya. The FBI was questioning him because years earlier he had been friends with one of the suspects in the Boston Marathon bombing. Mr. Todoshev himself, himself was, was not a suspect in the bombing. There have never been even allegations that he had anything to do with the bombing. But while FBI agents were interviewing him at his house in Orlando, something happened and he ended up dead. The photos that Mr. Todoshev's father displayed at the press conference, he distributed them as well, they appear to show his son, his body, with, with six bullet wounds at his torso and, and one to the back of his head at the crown of his head on the left side, rear quadrant. We have not authenticated these photos, nobody has. But the family says these photos were taken by a family friend in Florida who went to the morgue in Florida and saw his body there. And if these photos are real, and he was shot seven times, including one in the back of his head, that is a little hard to square with the idea of him being shot in self-defense by FBI agents. At the press conference, Mr. Todashev's father said that he would try to travel to Florida himself to at least try to collect his son's body and bring it back to Russia to be buried. That was three weeks ago, that press conference. Mm -hmm. Well, today, the father finally got the body home. An overnight flight last night took the body from Florida to Russia. The Boston Globe reporting that part of the reason it took so long to get the body is because the FBI is still holding on to the man's green card and his passport, which for some reason made it hard to get the body shipped home. Officially, the cause of death from the medical examiner is just listed as homicide, but we have nothing else from them. The FBI will not even let the medical examiner's office release the information about how many times Mr. Todashev was shot. On the day of the shooting, the FBI said officially that he was killed after he initiated a violent confrontation of, his, of some sort during his interview. Initially, three unnamed law enforcement sources leaked to the press that actually Mr. Todashev had been armed with a knife, and that's why they had to shoot him. Within 12 hours of those initial claims, though, two of those three law enforcement sources recanted and said, no, 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 actually, he did not have a knife. Then there were other unnamed law enforcement sources who leaked that actually he was totally unarmed. So then why did they have to shoot him at all then? And apparently shoot him a whole bunch of times. Ah, time for a new leak. Then we got another new set of leaks from unnamed law enforcement sources saying, okay, he didn't have a knife, he didn't have a blade of some kind, but he wasn't unarmed either. He had a pole or a broomstick or maybe it was a sword. He threw a chair. He tipped over a table. He maybe lunged for a ceremonial sword that was right there. Or maybe it wasn't right there. It was across the room, but it was somewhere in that apartment maybe. There have been FBI and law enforcement leaks about what happened from the very beginning, all conflicting, all contradictory, but all basically trying to make it seem like the FBI did the right thing by shooting and killing this guy. And in the face of all that serial, unnamed source leaking, the official word has been nothing. So unofficial, self-exonerating leaks by the dozen, but officially, bupkis, silence. The Boston Globe describing the FBI in this case as being unusually tight-lipped, saying that their refusal to clarify anything about how and why they killed this guy in Florida, quote, contrasts sharply with past shootings involving agents. The only word from the FBI officially at all was that violent confrontation press release they put out the day of the shooting. And then a week later, they put out another statement that gave the address where the shooting happened and the guy's name, but the only other thing that it said was that the shooting was under review internally. Quote, the FBI is conducting a review. While this internal review process is occurring, we cannot comment regarding investigative details. The FBI takes very seriously any shooting incidents involving our agents. And as such, we have an effective time-tested process for addressing them internally. The review process is thorough and objective. Time-tested process. So this is supposed to be our reassurance. Be patient. Sure, this whole thing kind of makes no sense and hasn't really since the very beginning, but the FBI itself will get to the bottom of it internally. Do you want to know how that's going to go? According to the blockbuster scoop in the New York Times today, the FBI has used this internal review process to investigate 150 shootings by FBI agents over the past two decades. 70 people shot and killed by FBI agents, 80 people shot and wounded by FBI agents. And if you add those together, in all 150 of those cases, the FBI internal review process said that the shooting was justified. All 150. 
In a FOIA lawsuit, the Times got 2,200 pages of documentation from the FBI showing that perfect 100% exoneration rate for all FBI shootings that killed or wounded someone. Those documents are for shootings between 1993 and 2011. And since 2011, quote, same pattern. An FBI spokesman says that since 2011, there have been no findings of improper intentional shootings by FBI agents. So more than 150 shootings that killed or wounded somebody all reviewed internally, all of them, every single one, turns out it was just fine, totally justified. That was even the finding in one shooting in Maryland in 2002, where an FBI agent shot an innocent man in the head after mistaking him for a bank robber. They shot him in the head, the guy survived, and the Bureau then settled a lawsuit with him by paying him $1.3 million. But still, the internal shooting review by the FBI, even in that case, said the agent did nothing wrong. So then why did you pay him $1.3 million? They have never in at least 20 years ever said an agent did something wrong when an agent wounded or killed somebody, not once. If that seems at all sketchy to you, don't worry. Law enforcement sources, as always, have an explanation. Quote, current and former FBI officials defended the Bureau's handling of shootings, arguing that the scant findings of improper behavior were attributable to several factors. <clears throat> Agents tend to be older, more experienced, and better trained than city police officers, and they generally are involved only in planned operations and tend to go in with overwhelming presence, minimizing the chaos that can lead to shooting the wrong people. So they never shoot the wrong people, except for sometimes when they shoot the wrong people and then they have to pay them $1.3 million. But even then, trust us, it's fine. 150 out of 150, all clear. And that is the perfect review, perfect record process that is underway right now in the thus far totally inexplicable killing of the young man who the FBI shot and killed while they were questioning him about knowing one of the suspects in the Boston Marathon bombing. That is the review process that the FBI says justifies the agency saying nothing about the shooting at all other than their continuing self-exonerating unofficial leaks to the press. And, and, this is the only review that will ever happen of that shooting. There is no other official inquiry of any kind into the shooting. Not the local prosecutor where the shooting happened, not an independent federal inquiry, not even a Massachusetts state police inquiry, even though two Massachusetts state troopers were there at the apartment when the guy got killed. There will be no review of any kind other than the internal review process that in 20 years has a 100% perfect record of exonerating the FBI every time. No wonder the family is livid. How can this possibly be the system that we've got? Joining us now for the interview is Tim Weiner. He is a Pulitzer Prize winning reporter. He's author of three books, including Enemies, A History of the FBI. Tim, it's great to see you. Thank Hello, you for being here. Um, why do you expect, or what should we understand about the total information blackout about the Totoshev killing? The FBI is our secret police, and they do a lot of dirty, difficult, dangerous jobs working against spies and terrorists, white-collar criminals. But there's one job they can't do, and they've never been able to do in their 100-year history, which is to police themselves. If a local prosecutor in Orlando said, you know what, this has been ruled a homicide by the medical examiner, and this happened on my patch, I want to investigate it, could that happen? No. I mean, a giant comet will hit the Earth before that happens because the jurisdiction of the FBI is nationwide, and it trumps local law enforcement in every case. There's only one force that's able to investigate the FBI, and that is the Inspector General's Office at the Justice Department, which on the flowchart of government is above the FBI. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a small crew of overworked and underpaid lawyers, and they have investigated misconduct by the FBI before, but not individual shootings. They will get after great systemic problems but not a pattern of misconduct uh, as revealed in the nifty scoop uh, by my old newspaper today. Well, p pattern, of, pattern of conduct. I mean, this scoop is astonishing. It, it's a result of a FOIA lawsuit. The Times has received and posted online 2,200 pages of documents that are all of these reviews. But the bottom line is, is that in 150 of them, the Perfect. record is 0 for 150. Shouldn't we expect that that pattern is too suspicious to go uninvestigated? This is one of the great problems of democracy, okay? We want a secret police to keep us safe. And we want to be free and have civil liberties, freedom of information, and knowledge. But who's going to police the police, okay? 
This has been a problem of democracy ever since uh, they came up with the idea in Athens a while ago. Has there ever been an effective effort uh, over the course of the life of the FBI, while it has existed in this way, uh, to police it better than it is policed? I can think of two, okay? After Watergate, after Nixon fell, the FBI had to investigate itself. Because under Nixon and Johnson and going back into the 50s and 60s, they had broken into people's houses, opened their mail, tapped their telephones without warrants in pursuit of domestic terrorists like the Weather Underground. Okay, sound familiar? Yeah. <laughs> Policing people with illegal tactics in the name of national security. And the FBI did investigate itself and wound up indicting its number two guy, Mark Felt, also known as Deep Throat, and his intelligence aide. They were convicted of conspiring to violate the civil rights of Americans and pardoned by Ronald Reagan during his first months in office. The second is an, an Inspector General report of the takedown of a terrorist who'd been on the lam for 30 years, uh, a bomber, uh, lived in Puerto Rico, and a member of the FALN, which conducted a number of bombings in the city, New York, and across the country in the name of liberating Puerto Rico from the United States. Well, the FBI went in there um, in uh, 2005, and it was, they have a term they use in the Marines, we can't say on television, but the first two syllables are cluster. Mm -hmm. And the chain of command in a lethal operation should be like the chain of command of the military, but it was screwed up beyond all recognition. The Bureau's self-policing depends on senior FBI officers who tend to turn over every two years and you know, go into private security industry jobs and have no effective oversight of themselves or the agents under their command over the long run. If there is not a political outcry to, do, to exert some sort of political pressure on the FBI to make this right after this New York Times scoop, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what will happen in modern times toward that end, but um, it's a fascinating development. It would be me. helpful to have a strong attorney general. Maybe a new director of the FBI. There will be a new director yeah. of the FBI in September, and uh, good luck to him. Tim Weiner, Pulitzer Prize winning author of, among other books, Enemies, A History of the FBI. Uh, Tim, thank you. It's great you to have you here. Thanks. We'll be right back.